that party has done. So I was I was mentioning that um, Excel online, the Office script, they only work on Excel online, which means that. Uh, so let me just delete all what I've done before so that you will see. If you go to office.com, right, you can get to Excel online. Then I also mentioned that for me personally, I always do Excel online. If you do Excel online, the same results will come up in terms of it will get you to the Excel online. OK, so I want to show you, especially that last part where you mentioned script lab is like the playground, but let's go at it step by step anyway. So it doesn't look like um, let's go step by step. So rule number one is that Office script is only on the Excel online. That other time, I think we asked Steam, will it be on the web? I mean, on the desktop. I can't remember what his answer was. You know, I wish he was here for us to get the final answer, but currently it's only on Excel online. So if I type Excel online in my Google, I always get this come up. So this has always been my own fastest way <laughs> to get there. Okay. So now uh, you might be like, Oh, uh, to use Excel online, do I have to pay? Do I have to? Uh, he will have been in the best position to mention the different packages, but for many of us, they it's accessible without paying. Let me use that word. I think there is a part of it that is accessible without paying, or if you're already in a company, you will access it without paying, but you won't know until you do anyway. So you just try it out to log in and um, so once I'm in Excel online, right? So I'm in Excel online. Um, I will try to do two different things. Oh, perfect. Uh -huh. This is your usual Excel online experience. You don't have the office script showing it is automate the name of the tab is automate you see as i have home insert draw page layout name formulas data review view that one is called automate so you don't have it show by default uh, let me verify which account i'm on good so for me to uh, have it show as uh, there is a step you need to do ahead that step needs to be done at the admin side so it's a one thing, one time step. So what I will do is I'm going to log. I'm going to go to. Good. So I'm going to go to admin. So if you go to office.com. Uh, in fact, let me log into another of my accounts. So I'm going to just sign out of here. I'm going to log into another of my accounts. You know, to use just like Google Sheets, to use any of all these um, Excel online, Word online, it, you have to log in. You know, so, but logging in doesn't necessarily mean you have to pay, kind of. So, I'm not so certain what paying and not paying, you know, will do for you. But uh, let me show you if I log into another of my account that I want to use for this demonstration. I will show you. The first thing you need to do for you to be able to see the office script in your Excel and then that office script lab that you mentioned too. So once you log in to office.com, uh, naturally there is an admin segment. Not everybody can access it, but in a company, or if you are the one that set up your your account yourself, you know, depending on how you uh, created the login to your online office, um, online Excel, online Word, then you might have it. So like for me, I did my own online office access. So if I go to admin, once I go to admin, if you are not the one who has admin access in your company, then you might need to show this step to your admin so that everybody within your company can take advantage of this um, 
office script. So for me, once I am here, uh, then I'm going to go to setup. Obviously, it's in setup. So I'm going to go to setup. Uh, show all. So setup. Settings, sorry, settings. I mean, so when I'm in settings, then there's organization settings. So it's an organization wide setting, something that one person needs to do for everybody tied to this um, organization. Or if you are just your own on your by yourself, then also uh, tied to you. Then so once I'm here, uh, org settings, uh, all I need to do is. Um, scroll you will see office scripts uh, office script lets users automate their task in office on the web so if i click on it so you will see that i think by default it is not turned on so good things i have turned my on. so you have to turn it off this is turn it on this is always the first step and your company can decide that it might not be for everybody it might just be for some people they want to turn it on well, that's their choice, uh, but uh, don't let them know that. You might even say let them turn it on for everybody. The thing is, it doesn't do any harm. It doesn't. There's nothing you can do in it that can affect somebody else. And uh, he mentioned it the last time. You know, so I think someone asked that. You know, like VBA, you can write a code that can even go and delete a file and all. You know, he said that the security in it is top notch. That they you can't do anything malicious from inside it. So once you have this enabled for everybody, you do save. So now if I go to Excel online now, with that same, with this new account that I've turned this on. So if I click Excel online, I'm going to see Office scripts. So I'm going to see Office scripts. Uh, let me check. I would be happy if anybody lets me know if he's in. So I've been trying to reach him too. So hopefully, Hey Michael, this is Sudhi. Sorry, I've completely forgotten. I thought it was at 9 a.m. Ah, uh, okay, great. So uh, I was trying to do a bit of some. Uh, so now that you are in here, uh, let me hand over to you then. So I'm going to stop sharing. All right. So how much time do I have? I'm sorry. I. Uh, no problem. We can still do. We can do the one hour. Or, yeah, we can. Or 55 minutes. So. All right. I'm recording it. If anybody needs to go, they will watch the recorded part. So, awesome. So, all right. Uh, I apologize for some reason. I thought it's an hour later. Yeah. Um, okay. And I, I know the I, time difference was kind of a issue because you are. You even asked me what time. So, uh, you can take over now. I've stopped. I think I've stopped sharing. I'm not so sure. If I have. Um, so I meant this to be more of a, um, um, a session where we could do this interactively. Um, Michael, maybe, I don't know, like uh, audience, a makeup here, do they have access to Excel online? Okay, so how many of us have access to Excel online? Can we raise our hand? I'm going to raise my own hand. I do. You can do one of the two. Anyone else has access to Excel online? So I'm raising my hand because I have. OK, so I've seen Tosin's hand up. I've seen Fidel's hand up. I've seen. OK, so yes, a good number of us seem to have ex access. OK. OK, all right. So uh, all right. So e even otherwise, anyway, it's being recorded um, so we can, um, you know, we can move forward. Um, all right, so I think, uh, you know, I have several of the projects that I already have um, included in my uh, repository here, so you can take a look at that. Um, and what I plan to do was to just pick one of these and then kind of walk through each of the step and how sort of the learning journey behaves, you know, you know comes across. Uh, uh, and then specifically, I want to call out um, you know, few areas where uh, it, I can integrate this with uh, power automation uh, because that way 
you can get the sort of the end-to-end -end experience of using uh, Office scripts as well as integrating with uh, with Power Automation. Uh, so the you know because um, uh, Power Automation lets you access many other parts of your application, just Outlook, Teams, and so on. Um, I want to keep sort of the overall uh, scenario fairly simple, but kind of walk you through end-to-end -end so that way. Um, you can build upon what you see here and then maybe do go on to do more complicated things. Uh, so the scenario that I had in mind was to allow um, yeah, uh, you know, email. Um, so, uh, so I think I have, yeah. So I have uh, this one where, uh, so what it does is it uses Office scripts to email uh, chart and table images, uh, right? So. So maybe this data is already there with you, or maybe you know this data comes from another place. Uh, but essentially, what it does is it, there is an input data such as this, um, and it creates, it selects uh, a specific columns uh, from this input data and creates uh, uh, a chart such as this, and and then it emails out to the the recipients. So that's sort of the scenario. Um, and then depending on time, we could kind of go into as much uh, details you have out there. Uh, so for the uh, input file, I'm gonna kind of email or rather just uh, put this um, link here. Um, and the, this, is, this is the page where you'll actually, you can go find the input Excel file here. So uh, what you could do is you could just download this file so when you click on it, it'll allow you to download. Um, and then you can download this. So this is you know, going to your desktop somewhere or download folder, and then go back into your uh, account and then start using um, and upload that for, as a first starting point. So in my case, I have uh, this folder um, and I will just create a new folder. Let's call it demo. Uh, and then I will upload the recently um, downloaded file. So here's sort of the input file that you need, right? So I'm going to open this. Uh, so hopefully you can all see this. So the data is fairly simple, right? Um, so I have the uh, invoice ID, I have a date, uh, I have a customer name, amount, uh, the discount, and amount due. So uh, I believe, so let's say, you know, this file is set to, uh, let's say calculation mode. Let's say this file is set to open the calculation mode. Um, so it could be that, um, you have, you know, imagine this data is really large. In that case, you may want to set the Excel calculation mode to manual. So that way, any updates that comes into this uh, is not going to recalc and make your updates slower. So it could be, you know, some other process that uh, does the updates. It could be manual entry, whatever the case may be. Uh, but what you wish to do now is to, um, you know, recalculate. Uh, so that way, uh, you can uh, compute the amount due. You know, so let's say maybe there is updates to the discount, and then you want to, you know, uh, compute the uh, the amount due. Uh, and then once that is computed, uh, let me go back to the, the the visual that I'm looking at. So I want to get a chart that includes uh, across each of the customer name their amount due. So um, so obviously I cannot, you know, I, I can select. Uh, certain columns and create a chart. Um, so instead, an, an alternate way I've chosen here is to create a new sheet with only the extracted data, sort of a temporary holding point, uh, and then um, and then and then create the chart. So once I have the chart, uh, you can now string it together and um, you know extract that out to uh, Power Automation for email purposes. So is the the scenario fairly clear? Yes, I'm even also trying to. So I've downloaded the file. So I guess others too that you have Excel online, you can download the files. And like you said, 
you can also always rewatch the video. So uh, I think we'll just follow along while you are doing. So okay. we'll watch the video after. All right. Yeah. So I do, uh, on this page, I do have the video um, that you can kind of follow along. So the first sort of journey that I wish to do is to um, go back into uh, the uh, the automate tab and record. So for instance, in this case, um, so there are two specific actions that I need to record, right? So one is to uh, calculate. So I don't let's say I don't know how to calculate at all. And then second is to create a chart. Uh, so what I'll do now is to um, for the time being, um, I'm going to just create a new sheet. Uh, and then so here are sort of the two data pieces that I'm looking for. Again, this is temporary. I'm not going to use this later on. Um, so I'm just going to you know, copy the data as is. Uh, and then I'll go back and create a chart. Right. So those are sort of the my you know, think of that as a seeding um, that I need as a starting point. So um, again, here I'm not too interested in kind of format or anything like that. So I just want to create a chart for this, and then I also want to create um, uh, the the calculation. So I will go here and start recording, uh, and then this is going to be sort of my base code, and I can build on top of it, right? So first, I'm going to go to formulas, um, and then calculate workbook. So it recalculates. So that's good. Uh, now I'm going to go insert a column chart um, here. Uh, so yeah, so this is pretty much what I need, right? Um, and it uh, it also calculated the resize, but I probably don't need that. Uh, so I'm going to stop here uh, because it gives me sort of a base to um, build my scripts on. So once I stop recording, I can go back and edit the script. And um, so here again, uh, you'll see that it, uh, it it has the. I'm going to increase the size a little bit here. Uh, so it begins with the the main function, which is the entry point in uh, for the script, and then I have the workbook object, and then I get the application um, object, which off of the workbook. So it's just slightly different from how you may be used to seeing in the desktop uh, in VBA, where application is you know at the top level. And because Excel online, uh, in Excel in general, only allow uh, uh, add-ins and Office scripts in general only allows you to access one workbook at a time. Workbook is your top level object. So you get the application off of the workbook. Uh, and then here application um, has a method called uh, calculate. And then that takes in an enum parameter that says, hey, fully recalculate. And then, uh, then I did the, the selection um, and created the uh, the chart. So here it's adding a chart. It's, it's an API for adding a chart off of this worksheet, and then it uh, picked a column cluster uh, and then select selected the range. Uh, and then it did the resize and the move. This is probably not something that I need. I just happened to move it, so it created that for me. So I'll remove that. Uh, so now. So, yeah. um, so I still need uh, two things. One is to uh, select the appropriate data that I need. You know, once I've uh, calculated, I need to go and extract the the column name, and then I need to extract the um, the amount due, right? So uh, I, I'm not interested in the totals row, so I can ignore that. So once I need to extract these two uh, to be able to do that. Now this data happens to be in a table, right? So, uh, so that makes my life easy because then I can go back and extract these two um, columns uh, and then put it in a new sheet such as this, and then reuse the uh, the, the chart uh, command that I've already recorded. So that's what I'm going to focus on now. So, which is to get this uh, table. Um, so I'll. Um, I'll calculate, so that is the important uh, step, first step, and then um, I'm going to start out 
and line number five here once it's calculated. So this is a comment. So I'm going to say, hey, you know, get read data from the, uh, the table. I, I still don't know what table it is. So one thing I could do is go here, go to the table design and then look at the table name. So that's one way of doing it. Um, so I'll say, you know, constant. So const is a way to create a variable. Uh, I'll say you know table. So this is this could be anything. This is just a variable name. I'm calling it table. Uh, and then I could do workbook dot get table. Um, and so this is an API that takes in a key of string, <clears throat> which can be ID or a name. The ID is something that is uh, like a numeric number. It's hidden behind. So instead, I'm going to use just the name. So this is table one. Right? Uh, a semicolon at the end. So what this is doing is it's going and fetching a table. Uh, and then once I have the table, um, I am interested in these two columns, right? So I have um, a customer name and then the amount due. So one uh, way to do this is to go and fetch those columns specifically. Uh, the other thing you could do is go and fetch the entire range that is associated with and, and then um, only extract the kind of the column name and the amount uh, due. So this is probably simpler to do. So what I'm going to do now is uh, create another variable called um, let's call it table data. So here I'm going to go get table uh, get range. So this gives me the underlying range and then get me values. So this values is a two dimensional um, object with uh, whatever data type it is. So if I I'm going to comment this code out for the time being because I don't need to create the chart each time I'm testing it. So what I'll do is I'll just simply console log the table data. What you should see is uh, a two dimensional array of this uh, representation. So here uh, I'm going to go back and then you'll see that it has nine, nine rows, including the header. And then uh, the first row in you know, each of these row have six columns uh, so I can go and see. So this is the header in voice ID and all that. Uh, and then I have the first row, you know, a123 all the way to 124 mount, uh, so that's good. So the last one should be a 129 or rather. Um, OK, so it's giving me table total rows too, which which is not desirable. So instead of getting the whole range, uh, what I'm going to do is um, get, get the data uh, in a range between header and total. So this way I'm only going to get eight rows um, and I'll ignore. Or rather, let's see. Oh, it's giving me um, everything, you know, not. Uh, not you know, it's not giving me that total row, which is also not desirable. So one thing I could do is to go and on this table. Um, Table row for now, right? So here, uh, and then I'll go back to using the get range API. So what it does is it'll disable it, and and then I see the total rows is gone, and now I get the exact data that I need. And the last row is going to be 129. The first row is going to be K123. So I'm getting the desired, uh, sorry, the, uh, the header. So I'm getting that desired data. Uh, but for the sake of reading, I don't want to disable the uh, disable the total sum. So I'm going to, once I read it, I'm going to enable it back. So that way the users don't see any difference at all. So it's going to disable, read the data, and re-enable it back. So, uh, so you get kind of best of both worlds now, right? So once I have the data, so now what I need to do is extract this and 
that column. So this, if you happen to know that um, the table structure and you, you're fairly familiar with it, so you could do zero, one, two, so you can extract the second column, three, four, and five. So fifth column, second and fifth column is what you're going after. So this is a zero index as opposed to VBA. In VBA, this would have been three and six. Uh, but here, this is because in JavaScript and TypeScript, uh, this is uh, this is a, a zero index. Uh, all right. So now what I'm going to do is um, create my output variable, uh, so which I'm going to override. So that's why I'm going to use the let keyword. So once you do the const, that means you cannot override that with some other data. So, uh, but here I'm going to start out with uh, basically. Uh, empty array. So let's say I'll, I'll say an uh, output. And it's going to be an empty array, right? Um, so this is an empty array at this point. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a for loop. Um, and I'll say, you know, for let zero i less than the table data dot length so that how many um, how many rows there are and so this is a simple loop there are many ways to do the loop so this is one uh, one of them and what it's doing is it's creating a for loop starting with uh, i equals zero until you know go through each of the rows and then inside this row, so what I can do then is, uh, so for chart input, uh, this is an array, so I can do a, a push. So that means I can start collecting the data. So here I'm interested in um, the table data, right? Uh, so this is the first row, and then uh, remember this is a two-dimensional array. So this is the first row, I'm on the first row. Now I need zero, one, two, second column, right? Um, and then once I do that, I also need the the amount D, which is a uh, the fifth column. So I'm pushing two values um, inside of this, uh, and then at the end of this loop, I should have. Um, so starting, you know, I, sh I should have eight rows, but this time only two columns. So uh, I'm gonna, instead of logging or displaying table data, I'm gonna display the chart input. So now when I run it, oops, it's not, something is not right. So this is pushing. Uh, OK, I missed the array. So so there's a, a square parenthesis here and at the end. Um, that means I'm pushing an array each time and then um, I'm each time I'm adding, uh, uh, you know, two columns within that. Uh, so this time I'm getting the correct data. So I have eight rows and I each each time I get only two columns, customer name and amount due, right? Yeah, I need. So my teams has some issues It keeps me uh, kick me off for a second. Are you able to hear now? Can anybody give a thumbs up or? Yes. So yes, we are getting you now. Okay. okay. Now that I have the input data, um, I want to go add a worksheet. Uh, I could have probably recorded that uh, as part of it, uh, which is, so let's say if you're in the middle of something, you're like, oh, I wish I know how to record it. Um, so right now, once you're editing from here, there is no easy way to go and record and insert. What you have to go back to is uh, go back to the, the record actions. Um, so let's say I'm only interested in knowing how to uh, update, <clears throat> uh, update, you know, sorry, add a new sheet. So I can just add a new sheet um, and then stop it and edit. 
So this is giving me a code on how to add a new sheet, right? So you can copy paste that code back into the um, the editor. Uh, the thing is, it now takes you out of that uh, uh, script that you're originally working on. So you have to go back into all scripts, either by clicking the back arrow, or you can also click here in all scripts. Uh, so this was the earlier script you're working on. Um, so I'm going to rename that just so there's no confusion. I'll say, you know, report chat image. Right. Uh, so once I have that, now I can go back and add, uh, you know, copy paste that code back here. So this flow um, is a little bit, uh, you know, not smooth, not ideal, but uh, it's still, you can save your script and go back and re record, copy that script and come back into this code and, and uh, input that code here. So now that you have um, a new sheet, uh, so now the kind of the goal is to update uh, this particular range, right? Now, um, you know, it, this data can be, you know, today it's uh, eight rows of data, tomorrow it could be, you know, however many. So what you want to do is account for any number of uh, rows that might exist. So this chart input data that I just displayed, imagine that could be any size, right? Uh, so to do that, um, what I can do is um, first of all uh, get the uh, the target range. So I'll say you know const target uh, range that you want to input this data to. So I'll say sheet two here, which is the reference to the sheet that was newly added. So this line here it says sheet two add sheet and add sheet API returns a worksheet. Um, so now that I have the worksheet, um, I can then do, um, you know, get range. Uh, I'll start out with A1. Right? So I have A1, uh, so that's good, but now I need to know the two dimensional size. So, like for in this case, that's the size I want. And in the future, it may be just smaller or bigger, so we need to account for both. Uh, so I cannot stop at A1. So then what I can do is I can um, use an API called uh, get resize range. Uh, so what it does is uh, if given a range, in this case I have one by one, which is A1, I can go back and expand this rows wise. So let's say rows wise, and then I can also expand column wise. So I can go in both directions. So here it says delta rows, uh, and delta columns. I think you can even do positive or negative numbers. So if imagine you start out with a bigger range, you can shrink or contract that as well. Uh, but it always uh, anchors onto the top left uh, cell that you have. So in this case, I want to you know expand out to um, number of rows. So here's where it can vary, right? So um, chart input has the number of rows. So I can do chart input dot length. And because this is zero index, I have to subtract by one. Um, and um, and then, uh, this, so now I need the number of columns. So columns, I already have one, I need to add one more because I know the column is always gonna be two, right? We have the name and the due, that is not gonna change. So, uh, so I'm gonna offset by one. Um, so, right, so uh, I expanded by, you know, number of rows minus one uh, and then uh, number of columns minus one. So that's that those are the delta that you need. So here, uh, so let me make sure uh, I, I'm getting the right. To get address. By the way, stop me at any point. I'm not able to see your chats. Uh, so if you need, if you have any questions, I'll do it, please stop me. So now I'm going to. Um, uh, display this and see the target range is A1 through B8. Uh, so that is correct. So A1 through B8. Now I'm going to go back and then maybe just, um, you know, insert a new row here just to make sure. So if I do that, I should see uh, A1 through B, uh, B9. Uh, okay, so that's good. So I'm going to go back and delete it. Right. 
Okay, so um, uh, so once I have the target range, now I just need to update that target range. So I'll say um, target range dot uh, set values. So now this time you're setting the values. And I'll simply pass in the, the chart input uh, here. So uh, what it should do is it should create a new sheet and I'm going to delete all of these for now. I expect to see um, a new sheet created with those two column names and I'm on use. All right, so if I go to sheet one, so okay, I'm getting the data that I need. Right? So now, now that I have this data, I want to create the chart. Uh, so since I've already recorded, so I don't need to do any more work. So I just, um, uh, instead of like here, so uh, it, I can remove the, the lines of code here as I don't need it. I already have the sheet that I uh, need to add the data from. Um, so I'm going to remove the two lines of recorded code and only keep uh, here so instead of selected sheet, uh, sheet two, because that's the sheet I'm on. And now here it's hard coding the address in the recorded uh, code, right? So instead what I'm going to do is um, you see the target range that I have here. Uh, so I'm going to just use that as a second. Um, so now uh, basically I, you know, customize the recorded code to change the sheet reference and use a dynamic range. Uh, so now I'm going to delete this one and I should see both the, the chart as well as the, the sheet. All right, uh, so I'm getting what I need. Uh, so for some reason, the when I use the API, I'm getting a slightly different design, but the data is still accurate. Um, so it's overlaying on top of the data. So what I'll do is I'll just set its position to um, maybe um, let's say D1. Set the position to a, a anchors to a particular cell. So I'm going to delete that uh, now. Sorry, I delete the sheet and rerun. So I should see the the same chart, but this time at position D1. So now I have everything that I need um, so from a script standpoint. I still need to find a way to email this, right? So what I'll do is, uh, first of all, um, I will return the chart image out of the script. Um, I'll say, you know, get image. So get image is a base 64 encoded image. Uh, so you need to find this base, you know, something that can render this and email it, right? So that's the that's what we're going to do in Power Automation. So this get image is now um, being returned. So I need to declare that the main function is returning something, and I'm going to declare that it is returning the string type, which is the the chart image, right? So now I have uh, that. Uh, enabled. Uh, so this script is basically done. Uh, so now I need to find a way to run this in Power Automation. So for that purpose, uh, I am going to go to um, mm -hmm. used in the past, or maybe you've not. Yeah. Sorry, um, my wireless is acting up a little bit. Hopefully you didn't miss much. So uh, I was just saying that um, I, I finished the, the scripting part. I will need to find a way to email that, uh, you know, find, you know, uh, you know, take the chart image and email it. So for that, I'm going to go to Power Automation. Uh, Power Automation lets you create uh, flows. And these flows can string together any applications you need. And you can uh, set off these flows based on different conditions. So here, if you have any conditions like oh, a file arriving in a, a workbook, uh, sorry, a folder, or it could be you know some other triggers like maybe you get an email and that's how we kick off this. So all of that can be done. Uh, so for now, uh, and also like schedule, you can also schedule to happen, you know, particular 
uh, days of the week or times of every day. Or, uh, so you can configure that based on time. So for now, I'm just going to do instant Cloudflow because then I can kick off manually. Uh, and here I'm going to do uh, manually trigger flow and I'm going to name this as um, you know, demo email. So I can create that. Um, so here, once I um, create, so this gives me like a workbench to work with. And this is where I can add a new step here. And I'm going to pick Excel online. And, and this is a key part to pick the run script action. Right? So once I click the run script action, uh, I can say, hey, where, my, where is my file? So it's on OneDrive for Business. Uh, in the document libraries, uh, OneDrive. So OneDrive is basically the same, but you can also pick SharePoint too. Right? So you can also pick any of these are all my SharePoint sites that I have. Uh, so I can pick one or any of those two as well. Uh, and now I need to pick the file. Uh, so I think I saved it under a folder called demo. And uh, so this is the file that I'm interested in. And um, so now I need to go back and find um, the script name, which is the report chart image. And I will pick that from the list here. So any any file that you have uh, access to, uh, any script you have access to, so those you can in input here. So now um, it's going to run that same script on the same uh, table that we were looking at. So I'm going to save this and the next step is to you know, email. Uh, so I'm going to email. So for that, I'll just say Outlook. Uh, there are many different uh, email applications uh, that you can choose from. For now, I'm going to pick uh, Outlook and send an email. So it says V2, that's just a version which you know you can ignore it. Um, so here's where I get to specify you know, who I want to email to. Now this can come directly from a file, um, or you can also you know hard code this. Uh, so for now, I'm just going to send it to myself. This Megan Bauman is the test account I'm using, um, and I'll say you know review uh, on you report here is where the, the key part begins, right? So now you can um, include the result. So you can include it. the result is the same thing that came out of the, you know, was returned by the script. So this is the dynamic uh, part of the, the content. So you could say, you know, hello, uh, please review this week's amount due report. So now um, when I save this, what's going to happen is it's going to review, uh, it's going to send this email to this audience and it's going to include this static content, which I hard coded, and this is the dynamic content. Right? So the dynamic content here is what's being written by um, my, um, uh, by my script. And this is, um, um, uh, yeah, so this is the actual base 64 uh, part of the image. Now, if I want to um, uh, run this direct, if I run this directly, it is not going to still render the actual image because this is still the base 64 version of it. I need to add some additional um, annotations on top um, so that it can display it. And this is, um, you can like find this on the internet as well. So let's say, uh, display uh, base 64 in HTML, uh, and you will see uh, that you need to add this additional data, which is that. Um, and I'm going to mm -hmm. copy that piece of code um, and go back into my uh, script. So what I'll do is in my script, um, when I return that data, I'm also going to uh, append this data at the top. I mean, at the beginning. This is a JavaScript way of appending, so you can put any string and do plus, and then um, and then the image. So now um, I think I have enough in here to uh, 
it on. So let's see. I think I might be missing one small piece, but let me just run this uh, and then see what happens. Uh, so to run, um, you can go back and click run here. And what happens then is it's doing some, uh, the very first time it's going to uh, ask for some checks to be done. Uh, once it passes, it'll run on its own. Uh, so note that I'm not in Excel application, right? So this is kicking off that script in the unattended fashion. That means the user is not, you don't have to be uh, sitting in front of the computer. Uh, so once this is done, uh, it's running this. So I can go in and then see. So this looks like it has already run. Uh, it's already sent an email. Uh, so uh, let me see what kind of email has come back. Um, all right, so so here I'm not getting the data that I need. So you can see that it's it inputs the, the data uh, directly verbatim. So what I need is for it to actually um, you know copy the uh, the actual image and not the data. So for that, I'm going to go back into edit mode again. So I'll edit the thing. So I need to adjust this a little bit. Um, so to do that, I can do a code view. So this is sort of, um, you know, this is an interface where you can directly input data. If you happen to have an image, it would input the image. But because I don't have an actual image, uh, I have a base 64 string. So I need to go back in here and um, add a tag. Um, so to add a tag, I'm going to go back to that helps that I was seeking. Um, and then I'm going to look for the um, uh, this image tag, right? So I, I can image source is what I need. Um, so I'm going to go back and say, you know, image source and I think I need a double quotes and then at the end double quotes. Um, I'm going to save. Uh, I'll just to double check. I'll go back and check out one of my um, previously done. OK. So here, yeah, that should do it. So I've done this before. Uh, here I've, I'm appending the data um, and looks like it needs a comma and a space. So here I'm going to do comma and a space. So that should do it, I think. I'll go back to my demo email um, and edit that, make sure it looks good. OK, so it looks like it's. Looks good, um, so I will. Run this now. So it now has sent me the, the correct email chat image. Um, so the part that I did the last few seconds around um, editing the outlook um, to give the specific image that I need. So this is pretty typical of how power automation uh, flows work. So even though you're outside of the Excel, um, you need to kind of figure out, OK, for this action, in this case, send email, how does it require the input data to be present? Uh, it expects um, you know, image or, or the rich content to be present directly. Uh, if you don't have it, in the, if you have it in a different format, as I had in this case, Excel doesn't send images. It sends the base 64. 
is what I can extract. Um, and I can actually, you know, uh, I have to fine tune that uh, in a way that I, that I actually it can work. Uh, so that's sort of the brief demo given some of the, you know, uh, like I joined a little, you know, quite late. Uh, so I'm cut on a couple of scenarios that I wanted to also showcase how to uh, send range image, uh, but you can find that on my uh, sample page there. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, so. so yeah, sorry again, I I'm, I'm completely apologize for showing up so late. Uh, I thought it was an hour later, uh, I completely missed it. No, no, thanks and uh, I want to ask anybody any questions. I know people are trying to to catch up. Even me, I'm going to try to go and redo it. I'm very happy that you already have it. Like a, you have an article that details the steps, so it will help me a lot in in re reproducing it because I'm already thinking of things I can do with this. This is uh, already very mind opening for me. The fact that I can connect it to Flow, it's something. Yeah that I never knew or thought of. So, uh, okay, so let me let people ask questions. So, Temidayo, you have a question. Yeah, you can unmute yourself and ask. Uh, Hello. Is, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, thank you very much for this section. So I want to know, like now, what's the advantage of the modern Excel over Power, power Up itself? Because basically I feel like both, both are doing the same thing right now. Uh, so when you say um, modern Excel, uh, do you mean uh, the Power Automate that I showed you, or the yes, Excel? yes, 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 yes. This Power Automate you showed just now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, Power Apps is a way for you to create user interfaces, right? So imagine you have you know, field engineers who go out and inspect and provide reports and you want those reports to be captured in Excel. Now the field engineers may have like a tablet or a phone uh, or a you know a device with them uh, and you want to give them an interface to interact with. So let's say they go to on site and they inspect a machine and then provide notes, take readings and input the readings. Now Power App is uh, you know gives you the ability to interact using uh, an actual user interface. So it's a way instead of creating a, like a whole a web or a mobile app, you can create an app pretty quickly by interacting with a simple UI. Um, and to access that, you will go, you know, Power Apps, uh, for those who may not be aware of what we're talking here. Um, so Power App, you can, um, uh, let me see if I have one. My apps. So I have this app here, right? So this app, it, it, you know, I have like a customer name and amount view. So these are two things that I can submit. Um, and this, this is a UI that you're seeing on a browser here, but this might very well be on my mobile device or a tablet. And Power App lets you uh, give this form type of interface, and you can submit data from here, and then hook this up to any anything on your backend side. Um, so um, so this can this in turn can kick off a flow. Um, let's see if I can edit this. You will see that. Um, uh, so this gives me sort of a form control, but within that form control, I can also say, hey, you know, when you when somebody submits this. Um, but run some power automation, I forget how that how that works. Uh, I've done this a while back. So, um, so power automation uh, is something that works in the background. Think of it as on the server side. Um, so this all this flow that you saw here happens on the server side, whereas power automation can be used um, as a, a UI driven way for kicking off an existing flow. Um, and so that way you can um, have a user initiated uh, action or a trigger as opposed to some other event like a file arriving or an email arriving. You can say when this form that Power Ops uh, submits, you know, do something. Uh, so you can also substitute that with um, Microsoft Forms as well. 
So there are kind of a couple of ways for doing it, but Power Apps gives you a way to um, enable and customize this and create like a mobile or a web app very quickly. Uh, it, so it's all sort of web 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 based. Does okay, that? Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, any other person have a question? Uh, Kingsley, if I Elvis, uh, Mr. Deolu, Mr. Fidel, Salam. Anybody, any questions? By the way, you can ask him questions outside of just, uh, you know, like I said, he's, he is uh, on the internal Microsoft team. So obviously, <laughs> There will be things you would know that you would not know so that you can ask him if you want about the direction of Excel. And yeah. He's, yeah. Yeah. And he is someone that is very open. So that's one thing I I am very grateful uh, in knowing him for. Like he is always willing to, you know, he doesn't ask as if you disturb him. He's always willing to share. Uh, I, I'm always thankful for that, and I know that's something you benefit also from now that you've known him. You can also uh, is is share his email. Uh, okay, so uh, Sudi, one question that I have is around like today now you've shown us how to connect from. I never knew that I can connect to just pick out the office scripts from uh, Flow, from Power to Mate. But now that you've shown it, it, it has increased the amount of ideas I'm having or the possibilities of ideas I'm having of how to use office, uh, office script. Before now, I've always been afraid that, oh, whatever I do can only interact within that, um, that Excel online file. But now, this is like the, the 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 potential is becoming limitless. So I, I would like to ask, apart from Office Flow, apart, I mean, apart from uh, Power Automate, is there any other thing that uh, or any other tool that can have that interesting connection to my Office script? Is there somewhere else I can pick up my Office script or something else I can talk to? you know, with my office script, I'm very, very happy to, because everything you say opens my mind. So I'm just like, let me try and, you know, ask you directly if you know other things, you know, now I know Power Automate, but I'm guessing there might be other things too, you know, that can pull what I've done in the office script. Uh, yeah, well, so Power Automation is right now pretty much the only way you can interact with uh, the sort of the outside applications, um, you know, beyond Excel. Uh, there is another feature for making service API calls, which is, you know, just make a web API call to fetch uh, data that you may have externally. Um, I have a, a small example that I can show you, N not, not a working example, but some screenshots. Um, uh, that would be nice. Uh, I think uh, one time I even asked, uh, I think maybe then it wasn't yet done, but it seems now it's done, right? Uh, it's it is. Um, I mean, there are some limitations for um, you know using this. Um, so uh, we no longer hear you. I think what you said that happened again. Okay, now you're back. Yeah, sorry, I was lost. My GitHub account has a lot of repository, you know, 61 or something. So these are either I forked or created. Um, so this sample shows you how to go fetch that data. So it's used by, it's used, uh, it's done using uh, an API called fetch. And uh, what you can do then is to go fetch some information by using this API that GitHub provides. So GitHub already provides this API, uh, and then you need to go integrate that into Excel. Uh, so this sample shows you how to use the fetch API, which is, um, oops, sorry, I mean, that. Um, I don't know if it, it's probably too small here. Um, this, so you can do uh, await fetch, and then give it the API, and then you know get the data that way. 
Uh, you can not only create, but you can also create content another place. If GitHub allowed you to add a new re repository, give it a name, uh, you will use the same API, but um, slightly different parameters to also not only read, but also you know post the data that you need. So uh, yeah, that's another way to link uh, offer scripts with um, kind of external applications. If I might ask, uh, is it only going to pick APIs that are built off uh, GitHub, or can I use it to pick an API that is on my own, you know, non-related to GitHub domain? Yeah, absolutely. As long as um, as long as you, the service allows you to call that API, and uh, a lot of even you know you might be using some. Uh, CRM type of applications within your environment. Uh, if if those applications allows you to integrate with their data using an API, then you can you know directly invoke it. Oh, oh. I'm really dancing now because I have something I can quickly go and do it that has that scenario. Oh, this is great. So uh, I'm, I know you have a lot of resources that you've created because uh, as far as I'm concerned, you're the most active person on the Microsoft side as regards helping us to know how Office Script work and all. So uh, it would be nice if you share where we can get to learn more, the resources you've created, that we can go and start taking advantage of. It would be really nice. <laughs> so, yeah, so the um, all my samples have, are also available on the uh, official site now. Uh, so if you go under samples, you'll find you know, basics, uh, beyond basics, scenarios, community contributions. So all of these are available for you to use. Uh, pretty much everything that I had had are now transferred over. Uh, I, I went here because I was kind of running short of time and I didn't want to go search here. But yeah, this this should be the um, the available. I mean, the the go to location. I just copy pasted that in the Teams chat as well. Great, great. Thank you. I've gotten something I'm going to do in June. <laughs> so uh, great. And uh, again, just to ask the audience if any questions before I even need to ask you. Hope we are not uh, taking too much of your own time because I know all these probably also have affected your own. Uh, that's part of the problem we face with the time zone differences. It's a bit tricky sometimes. So, but anybody have any questions in the main for him before we draw the curtain on the session? Okay. Okay. So. Uh, no, no, no. We. Like I said, I'm always very, very grateful to you that you you always uh, are willing to share your knowledge with us. And um, you know, I, I even the other people in the space, I whenever they are asking for someone from Microsoft that can show them what's new, you know, I always know that you are one person that they can reach out to. So. Yeah, Thank absolutely. you very much. I'm very, very grateful. I understand completely. So, uh, okay, so I guess if no more questions, I'm going to just uh, once again say a big thank you to Sudi for the very useful resources. I know the session didn't maybe go the way you wanted. You said you had to cut some things out, uh, but still we are very, very grateful that the one you showed us it's very related with something that it's opening my eyes. And uh, the good thing about when you open my eyes is the fact that I'm going to create maybe like more content around this that I'll keep sharing and I'll keep telling people I got this you know, from the amazing demo that Sudi had done. And it makes it even easier for me to share this knowledge to others because I can always tell them, you know what, on the Microsoft build documentation, this is where you find a lot of all these resources. So I'm very, very grateful for this. And I know people who even reach out to me for things. I can always 
uh, help them understand that oh, this one you reached out to me for, you can do it with the Office script and it's not difficult. There's a record button, there's this resource you can leverage. So I want to say a very, very big thank you. And to all our participants today, I want to say also a big thank you for staying to the end and for staying till our special guest joined. You know, so it's something that I do also do not take for granted. And so I want to say to everybody, thank you once again. And Sudi, a very big thank you to you. Uh, when next do you think we can disturb you to, I don't know, whenever you will have, uh, do you think there's something else that maybe one day you might have to show us? You know, so it could be yeah. December, November, it could be any time. Yeah, so we have um, we have some few new features coming on, um, and um, I, I was I was just looking up to see in terms of the date. Uh, I think sometime probably like early July, might or rather late July, um, because we uh, we are working on a couple of. Um, new features that I would, I would like to showcase, you know, oh, great, great. and we can talk offline, uh, figure it out. Oh, great, great. Uh, okay, so I'll keep the conversation going with you. So uh, whenever you are able to have the time and the thing is set to show to us, we'll be very, very grateful to have you again. So thank you very much. And to everybody in the house, thank you. Do take advantage of all the resources you have posted in the chat box. You have posted a lot of resources that allows you to get up to start, you know, with this tool and see real world uses. And you can also connect with him. He shared us his email if you want to email him. You can also reach him on Twitter, on GitHub. So he shared, you know, all of the easy ways you can get across to him. So. Uh, make sure you take advantage of those resources and hopefully you will start leveraging these and using it to achieve more in your company and uh, doing things that will make them happy that they even have you as one of their staff. So thank you very much to everybody. Thank you once again, Sudi, and uh, to everybody. Have a very wonderful week ahead. So, thank you. It's hard. Thanks for staying late, everybody. Thank you for also <laughs> helping you make our words. What's it well? What's it? Thanks a lot, sir.